um, we have seen the work from the studio Tipos and Tutinta uh, for multiple years now. You guys have shown in our New Impressions exhibition. And it feels like we know you, and this is one way to get to know you a lot better um, and to share you with our friends at Hamilton. In fact, this year uh, in the New Impressions exhibition, uh, you, you actually won the Director's Cut Award uh, because we loved how you played with um, non-traditional materials. Yes, Jim, Bill, and I were the ones who decided to chose that award. And um, we loved how you showed a really beautiful three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional print. Um, and the non-traditional use of materials. Uh, if you guys do not know these two uh, wonderful guys, we've got Lars uh, Admonson and we've got Matthias Beck, and they're uh, Norwegian and German in that order. <laughs> and they teamed up in 2014 to create the only letterpress workshop in the Canary Islands. Uh, it's totally manual. Uh, most of the printing tools were rescued from old print shops on the island where they've both lived for 17 years now. And apart from designing and printing limited edition works, uh, there's creative workshops for both local residents and tourists, which when I look at your Instagram, I always love all of the cute faces. In fact, one of them, he had his tongue sticking out as he was holding up his print. I thought it was very cute. Um, and I, I'm really excited you guys are here. So um, I'm gonna hand it over and say thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Thanks yes. a lot to Hamilton for uh, inviting us. It's, uh, it's a pleasure and an honor for us, actually, to be a part of this uh, project uh, all the way uh, since we saw the, the documentary uh, typeface that we actually projected here on the island as well with the permission from the director uh, at one point. It's, uh, we've been following you guys, uh, so it's a pleasure. Oh, it's wonderful. Still have not made it yet to, to visit you, but soon and hopefully soon. Yeah. So. Yes, the door is always open um, when worldwide pandemics are over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good. So, yeah, we basically uh, prepared a little presentation. Um, we've seen some of the previous presentations that other people have done, and we thought it was the, the best way of showing the work uh, to put it into a presentation. And after that, uh, Matthias is going to do a little uh, a walk around the studio and show you some of the tools and machines we have here. Uh, so should I just jump straight into the presentation then? Yeah, I think that'll be great. Yeah. You can see it now, right? Big, uh, big screen. I cannot. You cannot. No. Uh, let me... Share it again then. Sounds good. This is what always happens, right? You do multiple tests and then the moment of. <laughs> yeah. Let's try it again. And then going back here, no? Come yes. So let's see. And it is great. We can see it and it's full screen. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay, so yeah, uh, we basically on the Canary Islands. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard about the Canary Islands or even know where it is, where we are situated. Uh, Canary Islands, uh, it's an island, a group of islands uh, of um, uh, lava and volcanoes, and it has been Spanish for the last uh, 500 years or so. Um, as you can see on this map, it says España. We're quite far away from the mainland Spain. We're rather closer to the African coast. Um, but yeah, it's Spanish. And um, it has a long uh, uh, tradition here, um, or history and tradition. Let's see. There we go. And, uh, and even uh, a printing history. No? Um, the uh, Canary Island also uh, used to, or uh, there was a uh, Cuba used to be a Spanish colony, and a lot of uh, people from the Canary Islands actually immigrated or went over to Cuba uh, when the whole tobacco industry uh, started. So uh, they even brought back the tradition and the way of producing the, the tobacco. There were even tobacco planted here on the island, but mainly they brought it in from Cuba and from other places in, uh, in South America. 
So this is a, is a selection of lithoprints related to the tobacco industry. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, Canary Island used to be like a stepping stone between uh, Cuba or South America and Europe for export of uh, tobacco and cigars mainly, you know? I don't know what's going on. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, this, is a, this is a small local printer, uh, not that long ago really, but uh, there used to be many little printers around the islands. Uh, this is here on Tenerife. It's quite close to, we live in the capital, Santa Cruz. Um, and uh, on this photo, you can actually, at the background, you can see a manual platen press that we recovered that we will show you after. It's in this photo. So we wanted to show you that. Uh, another uh, thing uh, worth mentioning, uh, it's uh, a very influential uh, art magazine that was printed and produced here on the island here in Santa Cruz as well, was called Gazeta de Arte. In the 30s. Sorry? In the 30s. Also. In the 1930s, yeah. Um, and it was very influential in uh, the whole Spanish world, South America, France, uh, Spain, obviously. And uh, it followed the, the new, uh, uh, the, the new way of designing and uh, that came out of Europe and the Bauhaus school, basically. You know? uh, it was a group of artists and poets here who started the magazine, and it was directed by uh, a guy called Eduardo Vestardal, uh, who was born on this island, but he had Swedish origins. So I guess he was used to traveling a lot. He had uh, friends and connections all over Europe, and he linked the Canary Islands to the, to the avant-garde uh, movements in Europe. Um, here you can see the first number, uh, Gazeta de Arte. It was quite uh, uh, more manual, the, the very first uh, issues. Uh, and as you can also see, uh, it was, they were following the, the new norms of the typography uh, that was coming out of the Bauhaus. But this local printer were having uh, serif fonts. So uh, it was printed in lowercase, but with serif uh, fonts. Um, the Gazeta de Arte logo letterhead, I think that was done by Han. And in the, one of the last uh, magazines you can see is tidied up. They changed the printer, they got a sans serif typeface, and even got in the, the geometric um, modular fonts that were uh, very uh, fashionable at the time. No? Uh, unfortunately, the, the magazine only lasted for four years uh, due to the Spanish Civil War. Um, but they produce quite a lot of number, and as I said, it has been very influential. Um, you want yeah. to talk now, Matthias? Yeah. One, one more thing to the Gazeta de Arte. Um, just today, we got a message. Uh, there's like there was a, um, a project that we proposed to the um, to the local government um, about a, a reprint of the Gazeta de Arte with letterpress, and uh, they said yes. So. In the future, there might be some more news about the Gazeta de Arte. Yeah. So you can see there a little bit of what we had to do when we started, when like, like anybody else in, uh, in, in this business, uh, a, lot of, a lot of weight and was um, mostly muscle power. And um, so we visited a lot of workshops around, uh, around the island. Uh, we had a, some kind of a guide that was a book um, about the history of, of printing on the island. So we were just like driving around the island, knocking doors, mostly they were closed, there was nobody there, but uh, sometimes we had luck and could, uh, couldn't find some, some of the material. Um, some in a really bad uh, state, so we had to do some restoration. Um, this is one of our last uh, acquisitions, it comes from uh, New York, from the United States. It's from 1885. Uh, the model is called New Champ Champion Press, uh, Olmen style. And uh, in the lower left picture, you can see uh, in the state that we found it. It was on a really rainy yard behind a house. And um, actually, the rust wasn't the biggest problem. Uh, it was 
a little bit protected the parts from all the paint that was spilled over it. And uh, the cleaning of the paint was quite, quite a mess. Um, but uh, we got it running again, uh, made new rollers, and uh, starting now with a, with a pedal brush also. Um, all the presses we have are uh, manual. We don't have any motor running here when we are, when we are printing. Um, it just came that way. We, we didn't uh, look for it, but somehow we, we got used to it and actually we, we like it. We don't do really long runs and um, yeah, when, when we do the, the walkthrough, we see some more, some more of the machines. Also, we do uh, quite a lot of workshops here. We, we basically, our space is, um, the, 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 um, the, the space belongs to the local um, town hall uh, and all the materials belongs to us. So we do weekly workshops there as well, which we will spend after. But to have it manually, it helps, uh, obviously, when you have kids and people who are not experienced, not printing. Yeah, so we will show you a couple of um, projects that we've been doing uh, over the years and we, we've chosen them in a way that it's related to a little bit to the Gazzetta de Arte. It's, we're talking about modular elements, modular typography. Uh, this series that we did is called Printer's Flower. Uh, and basically we got these uh, ornaments uh, out of a local printer. Uh, they are quite... Um, uh, typical for the time in Spain, they're coming from the guns, no? Uh, yes, Fundacion Guns. Fundacion Guns. And um, so we had, uh, we have two or three cases of this, uh, of these ornaments. Um, and we got this idea that we were going to do the serious printed flowers. Printed flowers is a, is a term used by the printer. It's talking about, you see that little title page on the right hand side. Um, it's, uh, it's this little flow on it's on the page, no? Which the printer used to call the printer flower. Fleuron in French, me, uh, fleur means floor, uh, flower. So that's probably where the, the term is coming from, no? But they're normally quite small. So we made this series of uh, these more decorative, illustrative uh, plants combining uh, the ornaments with quotes by, by famous people. Uh, here you can see uh, a, a detail. Um, of one of the prints to appreciate it uh, better. So um, yeah, we did, we did this series. This also formed part of the new impression exhibition 2019. One of the one of the flowers were chosen for the show, so we were very happy happy about that as well. Um, so it's still using modular elements, but in a in a different manner. And uh, this uh, is a series of prints we did uh, mo on modular type. It was quite early on and we didn't really have very many uh, elements to play with, but we had this uh, geometric uh, uh, type that was uh, is very satisfying uh, to work with. And uh, I think this idea basically only comes to you when you actually have the wood block letters in your hand. It's not something you, or I wouldn't think of using the computer in a way. And I know that both me and you, Stephanie, we have a shared passion and interest. Uh, I know that you've been doing prints uh, in this manner as well. So uh, I, was, uh, I was pleased to see that really, you know, that uh, other people find it interesting. I it is fun to see, yes, how other people do and play with it and stretch it in different ways. I love it. Absolutely. I think it's also an old tradition uh, uh, because after I started researching a little bit, I think even some of the European graphic designers in the old days were playing with this idea. Max Bill, who later went over to America, uh, he was working a lot with this idea as well. So uh, basically here you can see it's basically playing with lines of type um, and until you get the message or until you can actually read it, it looks a bit like a code it's kind of hard to get at the first glance. But then when you get it, uh, it's quite easy to, to read it, no? So here are like this Back to the Futura uh, poster, is six lines of type, but they combine in a way that makes it into, or turn it into three lines, no? So yeah, I made, we made a series of these posters, uh, which was quite fun. Uh, and this led me to this last, 
work I did for last year celebrating the carnival here on the Canary Islands. It's uh, quite uh, a big deal for the local people. So I thought like we're going to make a little carnival poster. And this is basically playing with the same idea, but reducing the, sh the, the, the shapes, no? It's taking uh, letter forms and only inking or removing parts of the letter to turn it into or, or change it into another character, basically, no? So I find it kind of related to the previous idea. Uh, and I find, uh, I find it fascinating to play with this. Um, oh, before you move on, there is a quick question. If you have the name for that font specifically that you've been using with the plain, um, the stacked type. It's, uh, we don't do it because it's very, it's, uh, it looks Futura alike, but it isn't. So yeah, we call it Futura alike. It's an Italian grotesque font. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, I don't know which foundry it is from. It might be Nebbiolo. Um, but I'm not sure. Hopefully yeah. someone will help us one day and <laughs> we can get the sticker on it. Put the right That's why on. we have the community, right? So we can ask exactly. and someone will say, oh, I know. So, okay, yeah. thank you. Great. Excellent. So um, this is a picture of we normally do once a year or we're trying at least to do it once a year. Now these days it's a little bit difficult. We have like a little reunion in Spain with a local uh, or the, or the the, the little small print workshops that are based in Madrid, Barcelona, Valencia. And this idea came out of Valencia. Uh, yes. We were invited to take part uh, in the very first edition. Um, and it was a printer, a, a, a girl, woman there who invited us and we went over and it was great to get to know all these people. And um, this is from uh, the fourth edition that we did. Uh, it was here on Tenerife. And we, uh, every time we do this little reunion, it's normally a weekend. So on one day we go and visit, a, it could be a local art museum or a private collection or several places uh, even. And this time we went to the local uh, art museum here and we saw the great collection of, uh, of uh, old um, prints and magazines and including the, the Gazeta de Arte. No? that we mentioned before, the one Guardia area. coming out of Europe and yeah, at the time. And here on this photo, you can actually see a couple of people that you maybe recognize is Eva de la Rocha. She was over, uh, Familia Plomes. She mm -hmm. came to visit us here. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, on, the, on the other picture with all the people are next to Eva is Roberto Gamonal, no? they have the, they had a lecture about uh, Super Veloz, which is also a modular system. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and after that, we normally go back to the workshop and we do uh, a project together that lasts for one and a half day of printing. And, and in the end, the people who invite have to kind of finish it off and, uh, and send each, each printer uh, a copy. Uh, so here we played with the idea of modular type. We had many elements then prepared to play with. And again, this geometric type we used and we made uh, a huge poster together. We actually, we didn't do that here in this workshop because uh, we don't have a big, big enough uh, machine for it. It's quite, it's quite a large one, 70 by 100 centimeter. So it was printed on, um, on a totally different press, which was quite hard work, but uh, we, in the end, we, we managed to, to get, it, get it done. It was not about quality, it was about fun and experiment. Exactly. So, so that's good fun. Hopefully we can meet our friends again soon. Uh, and that and takes us... Yep. Ooh, do you mind if going back to somebody was asking what at the very first image for the set, maybe it was three back, someone's maybe pulling on something. Yeah, on the left hand picture. Is he like... Okay. <laughs> on the left hand side, this is uh, yeah. because on the cover of the, of the magazine, we had uh -huh. type to yep. show all the workshops that had been participating in the project. Yep. So this is uh, Paco Vela, which is a printer from uh, Granada. And he's, uh, he's from a, a family of, uh, of printers. printers. We, the rest of us, we normally 
self-taught graphic designers kind of thing, but he's a real printer. So he's kind of teaching as well how to to typeset and to do it properly. Nice. So that's what they are doing there on the picture. I yeah. think. Yeah. Great. No, that's <laughs> thank you. Thanks for going back. Great. Right. <laughs> if you have any questions, just stop us. No problem. Yeah. Oh yeah, Rebecca said he's probably pulling the string out from the tied up type. That makes yeah. sense. The last story, yeah, the, the string, I guess. The string, it was a string, probably, yeah. So, this, this uh, has nothing to do with type, what we see there, <laughs> but it was uh, a starting point for, for one of our projects. Actually, it was a merchandising article that we designed for a museum here in, in Santa Cruz. And um, uh, it has this um, laser cut uh, metacrylic. Metacritic, plastic, uh, perspex, uh, or yeah, plastic piece, and um, we made 500 of these. And uh, so the the guy that produced them uh, asked us if we want to do anything with the uh, with the leftovers, the triangles, and we said yes, of course. <laughs> um, so we went out of the shop with the product, but also with a a bag full of full of triangles, and. Uh, were experimenting a little bit uh, with these triangles. Um, so it came up that uh, they are really nice to do iso isometric uh, geometric forms. And uh, we, we did the shape that you can see on the right and uh, right hand side, um, which actually is the same form that you can see on the left printed two times, just um, changing the, the angle. And um, the problem of this, this triangle pieces is that they are not uh, the same height. They should be, but they're not. And there was quite some difference. And so I wasn't so happy with, uh, with the results that we can there, uh, see there. And started some experimenting with some uh, fiberglass mesh that, uh, that is used in construction. And um, Putting this on the on the triangles and inking directly on the on that fiberglass mesh uh, comes out this kind of strange structure, more more transparent structure. And printing it two times came up uh, the the print like this that we presented. One of the prints that uh, Stephanie talked talked about before, and um, we now we are thinking about doing a series with this ones. Um, we did some more experiments with the, with the triangles that you can see here. Uh, this is also quite, quite analog. We don't have any digital uh, router yet. So um, as you can see on the left, left hand side, we just uh, um, routed the triangles two times and Printing, now printing with them came up like this form. And it gives you also some possibilities to play around with uh, connecting the, the triangles in different angles. And see the triangle here. Yeah. Maybe you put it in the angle like this. There you go. Yeah. Actually, that's the size of the pieces here. Yes. Hmm. And um, we did another work that was a, um, a commissioned work for um, a wedding. Um, a friend of us, she asked us to to do some uh, to print some presents uh, for for the guests that come to the wedding. And uh, the input that we had from her was, uh, oh, I like very much um, the the Russian avant-garde. So we said, okay, if it's Russian avant-garde, it has to be red, it has to be black, um, there have to be some geometric shapes, and it has to be something. A little bit bigger. First, we we thought about some card, no? but uh, I thought no, it has to be a poster. And thinking about no, the the artist of that time. So um, we were experimenting again with the triangles, uh, with these circle shapes that we also routed ourselves, and um, finally come up with this. Well, it's a it's a dirty print. We have a better version that I can <laughs> show you later. And somehow it, is, uh, it might be the way that uh, Rochenko would express his feelings to uh, Zizitsky. <laughs> and um, 
the, the one that I don't, I'm not talking Spanish, Amor is, is love in. Amor. Yeah, in, uh, in English. Right. Amor, but in a more subtle way, kind of. Yeah. So next project, um, this one started with uh, letterpress, with uh, printing an alphabet, but uh, actually it is the digital, digitalization of, of this font. It's a very interesting font that also comes from the, from the foundry guns, uh, which is in Madrid. It was an Austrian who went to Madrid to, to make the, found, the foundry there. He started uh, basically in bringing uh, German type over to, uh, to Spain and just uh, personalizing the, the alphabet so they would fit the uh, necessities of the Spanish language. And um, there was a guy working for him, he was also German, Karl Winko. Um, and during the first World War, I think it was, they did not have the supply of, uh, of the letters from, uh, from Germany. So they started also to make their own typefaces. This one actually is not during the time of the First War, but uh, later on. It's from uh, 1927. And it's a nice combination um, between the, the, the Gothic uh, capitals and the smaller letters that have also a, a humanistic touch. So we found this typeface in, our, in, our, uh, in one of our cases and uh, started to make this um, digital version in two, 2014. Mm -hmm. And that's the result. Uh, as it was just in the, in the time back then, it was a, a, a multi-color font, but printing was one, one color only, but it has these shaded uh, areas. Um, and we also did some, uh, some multi-color uh, font that you can choose the, the color. Right now we are um, doing an amplification of the symbols. Um, and uh, maybe soon there are some new news about this font. Uh, we will keep you updated about that. Ah, another thing. Um, we wanted to share with you, I don't know um, how many of you are informed about the, the Letterpress Workers Project that is once a year in, in Italy. Uh, it was founded in 2012 um, by the people from Nova Punti, from Italy, from Milan. Uh, Claudio Madella is one of the, what is the founders, e Lucio Passerini. And, um, uh, basically, it consists that um, it's an international meeting of printers all around the world. Um, uh, it consists of three days of printing together, printing and a lot of talking and also some uh, uh, partying and drinking. <laughs> and um, in a quite familiar atmosphere. And um, Claudio invited me in 2017 to go and I was really impressed. It was a wonderful experience to, to be able to go there and to get to know uh, all the printers and some of the printers I already knew from internet, but uh, as we are on the island somehow apart, these meetings always really, really help us to, to get to know more people. So this is a group of that, that meeting. It's about 40 people. Um, it started with less, but the last times it was just about 40 people. This year it couldn't, couldn't happen because of the coronavirus. Um, but just a few on once, yes, about one month ago, the uh, um, press workers organized a smaller meeting in Leipzig in a, in a museum of, uh, of printing art. Uh, one of the letterpress workers, Thomas Simon, is working there. So he had the idea and he talked with the museum to, to organ, organize it. And it was uh, also a really great, great experience. Um, uh, we did three days of printing there also. A little bit different because in, um, in uh, Milan normally it's uh, all we work with uh, um, 
Let's say one table. Tabletop proof presses, quite simple ones. And it's more about uh, sharing the experience together than really printing uh, a lot. Uh, so this time we worked with a Heidelberg cylinder and printed uh, 500 uh, newspapers. That was uh, the idea we had to, to print. You can see a, a cover jacket that was made on the, on the right hand side for a special edition. And uh, yeah, you can see on the left hand side some more pictures. Um, there's a link that uh, Stephanie will share with also some more information about this, this event. And on the picture you can see the printers that came over. And also the museum made a really interesting uh, exposition about uh, the nine year of letter press workers, the results, all together. So there was like all the um, posters that were printed there um, hanging in its post in one room. It was like really, really nice way to see so much letter press posters in, in one place. I think that's uh, the presentation. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. That uh, was wonderful. And you're right. If letterpress printers get together, there should be drinking and talking and printing. There should be a wonderful yeah. mix. <laughs> yeah, perfect combination. How are we, what's the time? Uh, 12.34. Sorry? Oh, we're at 12.34, so I'm going to stop your sharing, correct? We're going to yeah. go to the, la to the phone. That's right. Great. So now we're going to get a little tour of the shop and um, we were very lucky to, I got to see it when you guys did the um, United, United in Isolation. Yeah, which is really nice. United in Isolation, yeah. Yep. Yeah, we had to do it quite quickly then. It's uh, 20 minutes we had to show work and show the whole workshop. Sorry? Okay, we will try the microphone from here. Yeah, on the computer, I think. Okay. No? If we if we think that uh, the sound is really bad, we change the microphone. But we start with the microphone from the computer. That sounds good. When you bring the phone up, I will um, make it spotlighted. Yeah. Great. Here you go. Okay. So, quick scan around here. That's uh, as last told before it's uh, the spaces belongs to the um, to the town hall to the cultural spaces of the town hall there's also some other um, facilities here of painting or ceramics yeah. photography so we are in good company yeah. and uh, so normally we work with with a lot of tabletop proof presses for the students to to print. We also Do you some, mind yeah. when you sweep, sweep just a little slower? <laughs> no, you're good, thank you. And uh, this one is our biggest press. It's uh, the brand is called Robel Proof Press. It comes from Germany. We had to import it from uh, Germany over here. And it's quite similar to a to a Corvus. It might be from the twenties or of the twentieth century. So the letters here you can see the she talked about before. Ooh, and there was a question about that one. They specific What's that? Yeah, Jim had a question. It was from Ray. He was asking about the curved portion on the press. Hmm. Jim or Ray, do you mind unmuting for a second and asking the question you were curious about on the platen press? Ah, okay. Which one? The restored one. Restored. So it, oh, it's that okay. part just inside the flywheel. Yes. Just on the other side, yeah, that. Yes. What does that do? <laughs> uh, uh, I think it has to do with, uh, with the throw off. With the throw off, okay. That makes okay. Sense. But um, I did put the parts uh, together again, but I, cannot, I just can, I guess it has to do with uh, 
No, this is roll off that is on the moving part, but I'm, I'm not totally sure about it. Because otherwise, it would be the rollers. Yes. Might be the, yeah, I think it's just the rollers. It's the connection of the, the flatten and the rollers. Got it. Like the trip lever? Well, thank you for showing us up closer. <laughs> this is somehow uh, uh, a, a copy of, uh, I think, Dev, 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 Dev Press. I was investigating a little bit about it. And so it was, um, in the time they were built, uh, they were not so good quality as some other presses. They were, but they really, compared to other presses, they were quite, uh, they didn't weigh too much. And, um, yeah. Well, we have to start using it really, because Matthias finished the restoration work uh, not that long ago. Um, yeah, I've not done very well. Maybe there's one trip that is this one. Just for trying. Get used to it a little bit more. Yeah, so here the type cabinets. This one is a, it's a really old one also. We find we had to restore because we found it in a, in a really bad shape. And we used it as a, as a model when we started printing and we didn't have any presses, we copied this one to make one in ourselves and, and, and plastic and copy. And okay, so this is more on the wood type we have. There's nothing so special, so I don't want to show you uh, the typefaces that come from Germany and a lot comes from Italy. And yeah. So far, the press. Hmm? So far, ah, yeah, we use a lot this one. The Safari shortcut press. It's like an American shortcut press, and we really like it because of the adjustable, adjustable height. So we did a lot of clothing there, some t shirts also is there. We have presses similar to that. They are very good for workshops and new people to introduce to letterpress printing. Yeah, yeah. That's the favorite uh, machine when we have the workshops. Everybody wants to be on that one. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. And that is the first, uh, the first one we got. It also came results, but actually right now it's just results. But, it's not but when we got it, it was the top of rollers to make uh, also the steel part and everything. And then we have a really small one over here. The cute one. That's tiny. Yeah. And basically, that's, that's it. Oh, no, there's one more. Oh, that's the one that. we were talking before, the one from uh, that was in, in a small town here. It uh, also comes from America. It's uh, Liberty, Liberty Bank. This is the one that you saw in the, on that photo in black and white in the background in the workshop. Everything is so clean. You guys have done so much work. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just clean it up good. Yeah, <laughs> you do. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. The, it's it's uh, true that the rubbers are quite new because uh, this one, they were also, in, they were not in so bad shape, but they were too small and we had no way to, uh, and they were not actually totally even. There was some uneven in yeah. the middle, so we just had to make new ones. Yeah. So that's that's the walkthrough. We just sit down again. It's not the biggest workshop, but uh, ah, there was one more thing I wanted to show. Oh. Sorry, ah, you just it's okay. Let me okay. get back over to. No, it's good. There we go. Ooh. Yeah, that's some some of our experimental uh, corner. That was the shapes that we used for the other poster. And uh, we also are experimenting with some, uh, with some wood type making, but we are really in the beginning. So we were trying different materials, uh, as getting maple wood in Canary Island is a little bit complicated. And this is uh, Futura Schmuck. No? Yeah, this one. Good, like the shapes of the Futura Schmuck. Um, so we are really like the Modular type, so the 
practicing a little bit with that one. And there's also another project uh, coming up soon that will involve a little bit more of uh, type making also. Um, because we would buy, uh, we're looking for a CNC now and we will investigate a little bit about that too. We've been seeing uh, the previous no presentations about. Uh, yes, really, I really fall in love with the presentation that uh, Ryan Malloy did. Oh, yes, Ryan, he does great work. Yeah. I think we sit down again, no? Yeah. yeah. And so that's, that's about it. It's time for some questions. If anybody has some question or to talk a little, whatever. If you want to see any more things in detail or just let us know. That sounds good. Jim was raising his hand. He's already ready for questions. Yes. I'm, I'm curious about the um, population of the general area. In other words, uh, you know, you're pulling from local clients if you can, but I'm just wondering how many, how big an area that is. Yeah. It, it's not that small. Uh, actually on, on Tenerife, on the island, uh, there's living uh, one million persons, and all the Canary Islands are two million, two, almost two and a half. Um, the town right here, uh, it's actually two towns, it's Santa Cruz and La Laguna, uh, about 300,000 persons. Oh, well, that's, that's bigger than two rivers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, there is, uh, to be honest, it's not a huge demand here. People are not, um, they, they like the workshops. Uh, they're not so familiar with buying letterpress prints, you know, as, uh, mm -hmm. as they do in other places. So, uh, hopefully that will change over mm -hmm. the years. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, obviously the Canary Islands is, is recognized, no, for, for, for the, uh, the sun and the holiday. So, on on the islands on the south side it's uh, it's basically tourism uh, and the islands live out of tourism so right now it's uh, it's not a good moment uh, basically uh, there are hardly anybody here right now so uh, but on the north side it's completely different you know the the, the climate uh, the culture you find the spanish communities mm -hmm. Yeah. I know Ray had a question. Uh, I'm wondering how did you get to the Canary Islands? What brought <laughs> you there? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for asking. Yeah, good question. We, we probably should have said that at the very beginning. Uh, as we said, I'm from Norway. Matthias is from, uh, from Germany. But we ended up with... Um, um, Girlfriends from the Canary Islands. That's what brought us here. Girlfriends who now are our wives, basically. And uh, we did not get to, we did not uh, come to get to know them here, but uh, yeah. I met my, my girlfriend wife in Barcelona when I was living there and you in- In London. Yeah. She was doing a language course uh, and we, we met there. And finally it was more attractive Canary Islands over Barcelona and London. <laughs> Yeah. I yeah, not hard to pick, right? <laughs> I actually thought because I had heard stories about the Canary Islands and my brother and friends had been visiting uh, and the way that they described it, because they only went to the tourist side of the island, I thought it was a rather long way to go for having a party. You know, that's, uh, that's all I associated with the Canary Islands until I got here and I completely changed uh, my view on things. You know? Yeah. There were a couple of really good questions in the chat, um, specifically about the flower series. I'll ask both questions. Um, mm -hmm. Those beautiful flowers that you had done, um, were they sentences or a poem? Can you explain more about what the content was? And did you ever print them on t-shirts? I think the t-shirt thing would be difficult. Mm -hmm. It's too, uh, too small details, we, I think. We, we did some t-shirt prints with wood letters and I think it works quite good, especially with, uh, with the Sofari uh, showcard press. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm not so sure about small lead letters and ornaments. I think 
the best, the best. Uh, it has to be really flat surface. Yeah. Well, we could, we give, it, try, we could yes. give it a go. Of course. We could give it a go, yeah. Actually, we also we wanted to expand it to five prints and do English version. Yeah, and translate it into English. Then it would be uh, easier to... Because now it's all in Spanish. This, this work actually came out of a workshop, a local workshop that we had at a local natural, natural history museum here. And um, so we, we made that project and... Uh, and the person who took part in the workshop, it, it was quite a short, they only had like 20 minutes to print. So we only all, already had those elements pre-composed so they could choose a flower and a leaf and a quote. So basically we saw how successful it was in, in the workshop and people walked away with the flower. And so we thought like we'd rather turn it into a, a series. And we would like to translate it. The uh, poetry is, uh, is just... Uh, uh, quotes about uh, flowers and love. So yeah. one is like, uh, el amor te espera en el rollo, como era. Love is waiting for you on the limit of the leaf of flowers some, somehow. Yeah, something William, like that. Actually, it is uh, English or American uh, poets. Oh, yeah, there is William, a name. Lois Williams. And another one is William Wordsworth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Henry Matisse. Yeah. Henry Matisse said, uh, siempre hay flores para aquellos que quieren verlas. Oh, there's always flowers for the ones who want to, uh, see, them. Who wants to see them. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's Different. beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, Lauren really loves orange and type t shirts. Do you mind telling us who made your orange type t shirt? <laughs> yeah, I'll be very happy to, to tell you that. That's a very close friend of us, uh, quite celebrated Spanish typographer uh, called Andreos Balius. And he has, a, he has a foundry of type. Uh, it's called Type Republic. Um, you can look it up on the internet as well. And he's very related uh, to the community of, uh, of letterpress printers. We even have a poster up here on the wall. Uh, show you, you can see it. This was that he printed together with another printer in Barcelona. Uh, so, and he comes for these uh, yearly re reunions that we are having. So, yeah, wonderful t-shirt, wonderful type. He's a brilliant designer. That, well, thank you. That uh, He'll be curious when he gets more uh, t-shirt orders where they all came from. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see, there was a question about, uh, do they have a project in mind for the uh, Perspec fabric printing they showed us? So do you have more plans for that like plastic plexiglass printing um, that you yes. showed? Yes, but uh, they're still in the making, so there's mm. really not so much right now to, but I really like the, on, 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 on one hand side, the, the isometric possibilities yes. but i'm not sure if i want to limit it to only that or if i like if it'd be more experimenting generally with uh, with that shape but i think also the the ones that are uh, now that, uh, has this, this uh, might also be possible to play around geometrically somehow and yeah and start experimenting with different shapes no and uh different forms to find new, new ways to use it. Yeah. The printing quality is, is very good when you get it right, so. And a very good reason for us to stay tuned, right? Like keep watching and that way we can see what you guys are doing. <laughs> um, oh, they have some good questions about um, kind of your success and keeping it running. One specifically says, how successful were you when searching the island for lost heritage of letterpress printing? Um, so kind of the, yeah, well, that, that's a good question in itself, yeah. In, in the beginning, it was not so easy because, uh, as we said before, we were driving around the island and mostly any place we went, there was, we just found closed doors mm. or, or the people are telling us, no, but they're not here anymore since 10 years or 15 years. Um, but then we started uh, with one in, on the other side of the island that you already once visited. So mm -hmm. you knew that in the moment they had some type. Yeah. 
The thing is, when I, uh, I did a little bit of letter press printing in London, I studied at Central St. Martin uh, College of Art and Design, and they had a tiny little workshop. So I always knew that I wanted to, uh, if I could have a little workshop one uh, sometime, it, it would be great. And when I first came here, I visited a little, um, uh, it's like a tourist fishing village on the north side called Puerto de la Cruz. Uh, and uh, I passed by a, a, a local printer. Uh, basically, they were doing photocopies and things, but then I could hear the printing machines in the, in the basement. And uh, so I went in there and I talked to the people and they called over the, the old uncle. He was having a coffee in, uh, on the corner and uh, he brought me down to the basement and it was all there. But he said, you know, I'm very sorry, they're not, we're not using it anymore. Uh, and he offered, the, uh, offered me, uh, if, you know, to, to buy it from him. But at that point, I didn't have first money. I didn't have a space to put it. Um, it was impossible. So I thought that was a lost opportunity uh, until suddenly Matthias got in contact uh, by uh, someone else. I can't remember how it worked out, but we ended up talking to the very same guy. And uh, that's where we bought our first uh, type cabinet with types and, and everything. And it was very well capped because he, then he had brought it home to his, uh, basically to his house. So, uh, yeah, it was, very, it was thanks to also what Matthias said about a book that was, it was a log book of a supplier who had written down all the materials and machines he had been selling to the little local printers. So thanks to that book, we, we managed to find our way around. You did mention that, yeah, getting, having that was like a, a little magical thing to find, right? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, Some, sometimes it was uh, they, we were offered. It's easier to find bigger machines and smaller ones, but bigger talking Heidelberg or whatever. And uh, since since we started, we have changed the place two or three times. Yeah. So every time we have to move, it always brings some problems. No, and, and right now we are here for for sure for one year. Mm. Hopefully we they will uh, extend the contract, extend it for mm -hmm. another year. But you never know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we have to keep fit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. And always the big pieces are the cheaper ones, right? They'll give you the giant presses. It's the <laughs> ones that are easy to move that are affordable. This is actually it ties into a good question. Um, I did you do you do this all the time? Are you full time working on the studio, or do you do other things as well? As we said before, as well, we are graphic designers, both of us, mm -hmm. and we have our uh, freelance uh, mm -hmm. studios, both of us. Uh, sometimes we collaborate, but mm -hmm. uh, in general, we are working each one uh, in our studio. Uh, so this basically started as a hobby and it's been growing gradually. Um, so we're probably here two, three times a week or something. Yeah. yeah. But then it also it changed the way that we do the graphic design and the computer. Yeah, I think absolutely. that's really interesting and somehow that I think I do, we are doing different graphic design with a computer now than, than maybe before. And also, um, actually right now, there's coming up some project uh, that are, where the, the, where the workshop is needed that we can do, that we can do them or that we just came up with these, with these projects. Yeah, these are proposals, the one that we were mentioning before, related mm -hmm. to the Gazzetta de Arte. So we would do uh, limited edition printing and workshops mm -hmm. in collaboration with local writers and poets. Uh, so it, it's kind of, yeah, it's um, especially now these days, because um, now with the, what's happening, you know, there is not so many uh, uh, private businesses investing in graphic design. So these projects that we, we have made up ourselves is, is going to be really good now for the next year or so. Yeah. Well, and it is nice when they intersect and can influence each other. You know, the letterpress influences the design and vice versa. I yeah. have a really nice last question and then we'll wrap it up. Um, somebody wants to know, do you spend any time on the mainland of Africa and is there any printing you have done there? We haven't touched it yet. No, no, we, we haven't. Uh... Actually, for a long, for some long time, it's, it's not that easy to go to Africa as it should be. Mm -hmm. If we want to fly 
uh, to Africa, normally it's more, it's cheaper to go to Spain, to Madrid, and then fly from Madrid to, to Marrakesh or Agadir or whatever, to Morocco. And now they have started with some direct routes, and local, but normally yeah. they are more expensive than the, than the other ones. Hmm. So yeah, we haven't been there yet, but uh, hopefully one day we, we can do that. I, you know, there is a possibility that a lot of the printing, uh, all printing uh, machines and materials that were used on the island here, because uh, there was not so much left that has been sold or sent over to Africa. And uh, yeah. I'm not sure they are, uh, some local printers are still using them. Yeah, actually the we, we heard uh, of one guy from the other island here, from Gran Canaria, who uh, is buying Heidelbergs and sells them and bring them to, to Africa. Mm. Oh, wow. We don't know what's, I guess they use it there, I mm. hope. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. You hope it has, still has a life over there. Mm. Uh, well, thank you guys for so much time and sharing so much about your process. Um, uh, thank you. That was wonderful. Getting to see more about what you do is really exciting. Um, I know to me and to others on the call. So um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for inviting us. Thanks yeah. a lot. It's been a pleasure. And it's, it's great, as we said when we did a test earlier, that, uh, that you have this community over there. It seems uh, uh, like a brilliant uh, you know, place, the whole Hamilton, how everything is united together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're very lucky that um, that this is just a reminder of how big our community is. The ham hangs is our way to like see the people, um, knowing that they're there and that we can see our friends every week is so exciting. Mm -hmm. Great. Which I will say as a friendly reminder, we have a Waze Goose, <laughs> which yeah. is normally when we get to see all our friends in person. Um, but like many places, this is not the year to see people in person. So uh, if you haven't signed up yet, you still can. Um, in fact, if you haven't gotten your packet, you can sign up at the highest level, tier one, and you get a packet in the mail and they all have to go priority because they're so big. <laughs> so if you haven't ordered, in fact, I will go put links over in the chat. Um, you can still sign up. If you don't want a lot of stuff, if you're living the minimalist life, 50 bucks and you can attend Waze Goose. So four days of programming so with some amazing speakers. Um, ham hangs are taking a break for two weeks because I need to breathe and sleep and eat. <laughs> so um, I look forward to seeing all of you um, in, we'll see you at Waze Goose hopefully. And then um, our uh, co-host who's gonna be after Waze Goose is November 13th with Sarah Matthews. If you don't know Sarah Matthews work, um, in fact, we can put a link over there. She's amazing. She does really wonderful um, hand stamped patterns and bookmaking. Um, so we'll, we can share that as well. So we'll see you in a couple weeks after Waze Goose. And then, oh, I want to say thank you to everyone who has become a member on the calls. Becoming a member is a wonderful way to support the museum. It allows these to happen um, and, and it helps us keep bringing interesting programming. So if you can become a member, we ask that you do, and I know a lot of you are. And as Jeff Waldvogel is saying down there, do not forget to vote. <laughs> I know everyone on the call is not in the US, but now is the time. So I wanna say thank you all for joining us today. Go vote and we'll see you at Waze Goose. So thank you guys for being our co-host today. Thanks a lot. Yes, well done. Yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hope to see you all soon.